I'm Jeremy Greer. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast where Gary fights Jeremy and Jeremy is winning. Um, it's been a little while since we've recorded. I don't remember the actual score, so we're playing... Jeremy is Avengers. Playing new rules, where I just make up the score at the beginning of every episode, and it's 20,000 to 1, Jeremy's favor. So you've mm-hmm. got a lot of work to do, Gary. Yeah. The, the one of the Avengers are winning because the fascists are winning, a.k.a. the Jeremy side. <laughs> it's true, yes. Um, <laughs> just call me Fascist <laughs> J. That's that's my new nickname. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> J and, and Fascist Bob. Um, the <laughs> fascist Jay and the Butterfields. <laughs> you will be snooched and you will be booched. Let me go um, change into my jean shorts and let's get this party started. Oh man, I'm wearing jorts head to toe, jorts up top and jorts on bottom. Uh, apologies, everybody, for missing last week. Uh, mm-hmm. Hurricane and busyness on on my end uh, kind of coincided. So appreciate everybody's patience. Yeah, um, the day we were going to record was the. Friday before the hurricane hurricane Ida hit Louisiana um at that at that point I was like telling Gary like and I did like I had to go out and like buy a bunch of supplies and stuff because it looked like it was coming right for me and then it touched down in Grand Isle Louisiana and took a right and then just fucked up all of southeast Louisiana um so if you've been following me on Twitter by the way I just want to shout this out uh I've been posting some like mutual aid tweets um there's a lot of like local groups that are not the red cross or um any of those bullshit people but it's just uh, people on the ground that live in louisiana helping out other families that live in louisiana they're they're posting posting venmos and paypal so if any of you guys want to donate to that that would be great just go follow my twitter and look through it you'll, you'll see a bunch of it just from recently and um and I'll, I'll try to include something in the show notes too if i remember when i'm editing this tomorrow but that'd be super cool because louisiana got fucked up gary <clears throat> Yeah, I I was uh, night of I was following on Twitter uh, a lot of the stuff going on. It was just breaking my heart, like a lot of people calling for help on Twitter, you know, who are like trapped. Yeah. Uh, And then it hit New York uh, where the same thing happened. Like a lot of people drown in basement apartments, like just like fucking in Parasite, like almost exactly the same thing. Uh, Yeah. So climate change, everybody. Um, It's yeah, it's uh, it's all fucked up. I just it's, recently it's on a different podcast went on a big rant about that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to go on, go on about it on this podcast, but it, it really fucking sucks. And like, um, just, just kind of spare me the, Oh, they should move out of the basement apartments or you guys should move out of the South or the South deserves it because they're all red. Like this, just fucking shut up with that. stuff. Yeah. All that me. shit sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, the reality no, of the no situation is something. that just do your best to help people, whether that's, uh, I've been posting Amazon list. And like I said, direct funds, uh, for mutual aid companies down here. And it's just do that. Go to Amazon and buy people some diapers. That's what they fucking need right now. Like, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, I was about it's to get a, on one again, Gary, really Gary, because I'm depressed the, and angry. <laughs> so we should talk about the X-Men soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, you're like, uh, you're like Sebastian Shaw, where the more that you, the stuff I hits am. you, the I more am. you absorb the energy. I get, you know? I get stronger and angrier with every hurricane that comes to Louisiana. look out god uh this week we uh we're starting here we're talking about avengers academy number 30 uh you'll you'd be forgiven for not really understanding the read order of the avx event because it it definitely feels like we're jumping around in time a little bit Mm -hmm. uh here and i don't know if that's because of how they were released like maybe their delays or whatever um we just kind of had to choose an order and went with it um but if we got, got it wrong we got it wrong. Yeah. This one ends up making sense. The next issue makes less sense. The the third one we're talking about this week makes fine, you know, sense just fine. And then the fourth one seems to take place after a lot of cool fights we have, haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, look look forward to that. Um, and it spoils where hope is. So we just know all those places where the Avengers <laughs> and, and X Men are going to fight. There's nothing there. Yeah. Uh, I'm beginning to think that our desire to go through uh, all of the extended issues of this crossover event, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe we had a little hubris, scary. Maybe we should not have been doing this. Yeah. Maybe we should have just maybe mainlined some of this stuff because, boy, reading some Avengers Academy does, does not make me care about really any of this stuff a whole lot. So um, I don't I, know. It's I still fun. I don't think this has anything to do with with what's going on. I am into Sebastian Shaw trying to take revenge on Emma Frost. Yes. Mm-hmm. in this and like i read a bunch of avengers academy like i have some affection for these characters so i was into it uh and the one thing that if if nothing else if the covering the whole avx thing did nothing is is to make me want to read the uh kieran gill and x-men run it's so good uh so yeah i really like that comic uh that we're covering this week everyone we've done so far i've really liked yeah 
um, I, I'm going to hit that up. I'll, uh, so at the very least, I did that. I'll, I think I mentioned it the last time recorded, but he did Generation Hope as well, and that's fucking great. Um, that kind of leads up to a lot of the stuff we're seeing here. That's where you'll see Sebastian Saul get his memory wiped and all that stuff, and then like Hope finds him, and like nobody's telling her who he is. She just drags him back to Utopia, and Cyclops is like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what? He's a mutant. Yeah. Cyclops is like, get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> that keeps happening with her, where people just don't tell her who like these people are I know. Like, oh this is unit <laughs> you know <laughs> just uh you know uh damn hope um let's get into it yeah. uh the cover here we got metal and uh, sebastian shaw fighting it doesn't happen uh what happened last was the x-men kids were sent to avengers academy to keep them safe sebastian shaw escaped um and laura x-23 is unsure of where her loyalties lie yeah. uh, which is where a lot of the conflict in this episode is going to come from which is interesting like i like i like this yeah. idea of these kids kind of having to decide where their loyalties lie and that's where we're going to start out like in the lounge with the avengers team um and this is whiz kid ricochet uh hazmat and x-23 kind of talking about this and being and whiz kid specifically saying like hey like some of us are actually mutants and I kind of don't like the idea of anybody being put up against their, their, against their will. And when hazmat points out, like, I'm not a mutant, he's like, yeah, but you're Asian. And America did that to, you know, Japanese citizens in world war two. And she's like, wait a minute, <laughs> you don't get to tell me about world war two. <laughs> My grandfather was in, the, in those concentration camps. So it's a really interesting Here, conversation. The- like it's an interesting debate that these kids are having. I'm 90% sure that one version of WizKid was also Japanese. Okay. At some point. <laughs> WizKid is a character who hung out with X Factor in the 80s uh, with a group called the X Terminators. And I, I only know that because of the official handbook to the Marvel Universe, like reading that. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure uh, either I could, this could be kid memory. So if somebody's like, no, he's from Laos, you fucking racist. We're not all the same. Like, I, it's just my kid memory. Yeah. But I think at some point, you know, he would be making this point with more of an inside track sure. with hazmat. He, this could be the new whiz kid. I did not even realize whiz kid was still around. Yeah. Like I was shocked to see whiz kid pop up. He could be time displaced and retconned. We, we have no idea. Like I haven't been, I didn't read, yeah, I've, I've been reading a bunch of X-Men leading up to uh, this event, but I, I have mm-hmm. not, I tried to read some of this Avengers Academy stuff and I just kind of got, I was like, yeah, okay. It's, I mean, it's okay, but I'm not really into it. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah no, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, the big takeaway here is that uh, X-23 is like, I still don't know where, where I'm at. Yep. Um, we cut over to the, uh, you know, they're the Avengers and the X-Men in the Situation Room talking about their plans. Like, hey, Shaw is incredibly uh, powerful. Um, we have, you know, we should evacuate the kids. No, we shouldn't because they're more secure here than anywhere else. At least we have a security system. And they're saying, okay, well, we have to find them before we tell the kids. And in a, in a really uh, good bit of the, like non-dialogue work, uh, you, you see Hercules uh, taping over mm-hmm. a part of his shield. And I was like, what the fuck? Because I don't know anything about Hercules. I was like, what the fuck is he doing with mm. the shield? <laughs> and later we're going to find I, out like it's a it's like a Gorgon face. And I just really like the idea that he's covered it up so he could take it into battle for a little while. Like, it's really funny to me that he has to do this. Yeah. Just that Hercules always has his duct tape. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> This I don't know where when this happened to Hercules, uh, but this is a really interesting, you know, direction for him. Apparently, like we find out later, he got depowered and now he just has all the famous weapons and artifacts. Yeah. In Greek myth. That's a super cool idea for a superhero. It is. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, I love that. Or like, I think that's really or a video cool. game called Hades. Either one. <laughs> yeah, or a video game called God of War. Uh, <laughs> like, you know. Um they're basically just saying like, he's incredibly dangerous Yeah. Uh, here. Um, we go out to uh, hazmat who followed X 23 out, uh, basically just kind of pushing her on stuff. Like if one thing about this issue that I don't love is that like, we spent a long time to get to where we're go, where we're going. Like we mm-hmm. do get to a decision by the end, but there's a lot of panels of people kind of repeating their arguments. Yeah. I mean, this you is, know, it's 23 uh, pages of not a lot happening and like X-23 making a decision, which is, and it's yeah. all good writing. Like I've, I actually feel like the different perspectives and everything are well presented, especially since this is more of like a teen focused thing. Like some of the arguments are relatively straightforward and simple of like, that's bad. I don't like it. Like, so we shouldn't do it. Um, but it just, yeah. it does take, it does feel like it goes a little slow for 23 pages. And it also, uh, it's tying on to subplots that we're not party to because yeah. we haven't been reading the book so like hazmat saying like why do you get so nervous or uh, x23 is like why do you get nervous when i talk to metal you know 
Uh, and it's like, oh, and it's just stupid. And has you know, like, like because your tits uh, are out. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I'm sorry. You, you are you are dressed like the Black Queen uh, for some reason, <laughs> you Wolverine. Because you are incredibly hot, um, and my name is Hazmat, and I wear a Hazmat suit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm only a, and and this is a very form fitting suit, but it's still a Hazmat suit. Like I, I got the, the sexiest, most teen sexy hazmat suit i could mm-hmm. uh basically we find out one of the characters reptile uh went to the future and came back and th- saw a future where they uh they hooked up where x23 and metal hooked up um i don't i that was after my when i stopped reading avengers academy yeah but it's just teen drama stuff mm-hmm. here who's hooking up with who um we cut to the the sewers the basement and we get my boy madison jeffrey's box uh in his cool mech suit uh, that he puts together the only um, mech suit a that, reputation. that gary likes maybe i know i i have a reputation for hating mech suits but really i like them if they're fat and chunky okay uh you know i just don't like the lithe ones <laughs> and like you ever look at a fucking uh, warframe you, you like bbms like, only <laughs> big beautiful mechs. yeah only, <laughs> the big beautiful mechs man <laughs> <laughs> like I, I is the result of a confusing typo searching my normal searches. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. worse Pornhub delivered. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh god damn. There's a bunch of mechs. Oh Madison and Jeffrey puts the box in box. <laughs> like the uh <laughs> put my thrusters on low. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> the uh uh but he's uh he's down there and he thinks that he can stop, you know, Sebastian Shaw ambushes him. And he thinks he can stop him by, you know, not punching him, mm-hmm. like just like putting him in coils. But Sebastian Shaw can actually absorb electricity and get super powerful and beats the shit out of him. Yep. Um, and from here, we skip to uh, Reptile and Finesse. And Reptile, in his mm-hmm. future, did not just see X-23 and Metal hooking up. He saw him and Finesse hooking up. And uh, the thing you need to know about Finesse is that she's very cold. Like, she's very analytical. Um, I vaguely remember yeah. that she's not a human. Like, she's not she's a, she's an android or something is that right I- no she, she's she's human okay. she's uh the all these kids were made by norman osborne that's what it was during dark okay. raid mm-hmm. uh basically and she's uh i think that it's implied i don't know if it's confirmed that the taskmaster is her dad like she's got taskmaster powers basically gotcha okay um yeah but she's she's got a lot of um like autism coding like okay. a very difficult to understand human emotions uh, again, I'm not making a broad statement about autistic people. I'm just talking about the coding. Yeah, you know, uh, kind of the, the the way that she is she is betrayed. Not making a comment on how well it's betrayed. And um, and she's feeling kind of pressured by reptile, like saying, "Hey, in the future, we, we, we you know we bump up these." And she's like, "Well, that's not the future, and I don't really want to talk to you right now. So you just need to go the fuck away." Um, and yeah. X X twenty three arrives and wants to have a conversation. And we saw this in the last issue where both of them um, are relatively emotionless, like people. Not necessarily emotionless, but like a little have more difficulty processing their emotions. So and relating to people, yeah, and so they they relate to each other very well. So it makes sense that X twenty three is coming to finesse to kind of have this conversation, and also it serves as a way to. Oh, by the way, we have to talk about the Phoenix because this is an AVX <laughs> crossover event. So finesse yeah. explains the entire thing that's happening. Explains that you know the Avengers think that she can't handle it. The X Men thinks it's the second coming of the mutant race. Um. But, you know, we, we have to look at, you know, both sides of this and she, Finesse hasn't been able to make a decision. And of course, X-23 is like, I, you know, I'm used to relying on my instincts, but none of that's really working for me right now. Yeah. Uh, and Finesse's advice is basically like, you know, usually your emotion, you're trying to avoid your emotions and your prejudices and pushing them down. Maybe now you should listen to them. Yes. You know, uh, and that is ends up what bumps her into it uh, as they're, they're hanging down though. They're hanging down to the beach where the, uh, the X-Men and Avengers kids are getting ready to rumble. Yep. Uh, be- before we see that, we go down to the next, uh, I don't know why all the superheroes decided to, uh, one to by one, man. Shaw, one, in a, <laughs> one in a one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but it's Hercules, uh, coming up with his invisibility helmet, uh, and tearing the duct tape off his Gorgon shield. Yes. Uh, which is rad. And unfortunately, um, uh, and you know, it's interesting that Sebastian Shaw didn't even know this. Like when he when he looks at the shield, uh, not only does it not work because he doesn't look at it, but he also absorbs some of the magical energy. Or no, he absorbs some of the magical energy from the sword. For the sword, my bad. Yeah. Um, the, which, the idea is that you know they did bring like I like how they planned to fight Sebastian Shaw. Mm-hmm. Like all of these people, none of the people are going through and being like, let's hit him. You know, they're not being stupid superheroes. 
you know, they know how his powers work. They're not, well, yeah, they're, they're, they're not succeeding, you know, but he didn't come up there and be like, you know, his blade is like, oh, this can cut anything with very little force. If, uh, you know? I'm just saying if Tiger was here and holding Sebastian Shaw's head in place until they could turn him into a stone, this would whole plan would work a lot better. That's all I'm saying. Well, no, no, it was very stupid for them to go, <laughs> go one at a time. And then, you know, a uh, box could help as well. Sure. Uh, very stupid, but at least they all brought you know, their Sebastian jaw hunting gear. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they thought ahead, which is, which is fun. Yeah. Just not, they just stopped. You know, as soon as like, hey, hey, let's, like, <laughs> good got plan. It. let's go. Okay. Yeah, Everybody break. <laughs> let's stop planning now. Yeah. <laughs> like Celia or uh, Kavita Rao is just like, guys, come on. <laughs> what do I do? Like, what? Yeah. Really? She's just hanging out while they're waiting in the, the, you know, on the bench to be deployed after they die one by one. Mm-hmm. It's like, why don't you guys go now? I don't know. What are you up to? <laughs> <Can> you <tomorrow? laughs> yeah. What bands do you like? I gotta, I gotta finish um, this turkey sandwich, and then I'll, then I'll, I'll come down there. I'll promise. I'll be right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sebastian uh, like pulverizes uh, Hercules, and then we switch back over to the kids who are squaring up against each other. Um, the X Men kids are kind of like, you know, hey, I, I want to. I'm they're they're feeling the brunt of confinement, right? Like they don't like to be confined any more yeah. than anybody else does. So they're they're pushing against that. And the Avengers kids have for some reason been assigned to like take care of these people, which is just dumb as shit on the part of all of the teachers in this. Like Hawkeye, what are you doing? This is not a good idea, Hawkeye. Yeah. Like what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I understand you guys are stretched thin right now, yeah. but it still sucks. Uh, and several of the Avengers defect, the ones we saw in the first panel. Yes. So WizKid, mm-hmm. uh, Ricochet and such. Um, and they're all getting ready to, uh, to fight here. Um, one of the kids, one of the X-Men kids is actually an Atlantean. And he's like, this is dumb. I'm not even a human. <laughs> like, I'm going to go be with my people. And then uh, out of the water comes a Sentinel uh, because they have uh, joining J- Avengers Academy was uh, Justin. From the uh, did you ever read the mid two thousand Sentinel comic? No, I did not. Oh yes, uh, yes I pretty, did. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, it's pretty good. Like it wasn't great or anything, but like a pretty decent Sean McKeever comic about a kid who finds a Sentinel. Yeah, like we three um, but with a robot. So I'm gonna send to it. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's it, it's funny. It's cute. Like all the X Men are like, "Holy shit, you have a Sentinel!" And later they're like, "No, no, no this one's nice." Like. He doesn't, and then the Sentinels like destroy all mutants. <laughs> you know, he just says that when he's stressed. <laughs> it's like very cute, like the idea of treating the Sentinel like a dog. Yes, uh, I really like. Uh, we also get this panel where Reptile is like, "Oh boy, where the heck is Tigra?" But he's in Triceratops form. Yes, <laughs> so it just, just like an annoyed, like just as a panel, it's really good. It's really funny. <laughs> like the, the the the, I just want to see the Triceratops like pulling its collar. Like, eee, eee. sorry yeah. about the Sentinel. Uh, like, awkward. Like yeah. when the racist uncle shows up, right? Like, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's a tri- racist Triceratops. Oh man, the worst yeah. kind of Triceratops. I think dinosaurs are racist. Uh, I mean, probably, but for like, they're born a long time ago. They're born well before the civil rights movement. Yeah. But like, I mean, also a bunch of racists were born before the civil rights movement. So like, I don't think, yeah, I guess they... <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> I'm sorry. That sounded like really pedantic, but <laughs> I bet you that there's definitely some, gr- some grief between like the quadrupeds and the, the flying dinosaurs, like a hundred percent, like just some real, like there's yeah. some serious beef between them, like some food poaching, things like that. And that's probably would start mm-hmm. some sort of separation movement. Like, you know, we can be equal, but separate says the Tyr- Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex. What yeah, are we talking that's about? That's how Pangea got separated into different continents. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. The bird, <laughs> all of the bird reptiles go over here and then all of the leaf eaters come over there and then you guys stay in that spot. We'll be over there later. Man, dino tactics, like a, like a grand strategy game about Pangea separating with the different dinosaur tribes. Okay. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty down. I really, uh, I really wanted to, to like that uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park strategy game, and uh, I was, I was so bored. Like I, th- I think I almost fell asleep playing it, literally on my couch. Which oh, just that's like, a bummer. Yeah, I, I think I picked that up when it was on sale mm-hmm. uh, at some point, but I have not played it. Uh, we cut over to Tigra, uh, and Tigra is like, you know, Sebastian Saul's like, you can't take care of me. You have the powers of a tiger, um, and she's like, you know, I can because I don't have to hit you your brain still needs blood. What if I choke you out? Uh, and he, uh, unfortunately anticipated this and smashes her back through a wall. Yes. Um, and even uh, says like, you came to the closest out of all of them, but you know, no, you're not going to keep me from what I'm here to do. And really like his goal here is to get revenge on Emma Frost. And he knows that Emma Frost is, uh, has a thing about losing her kids 
you know, probably all of her, all yep. of her, all of her <laughs> as, as like, I guess probably yeah. everybody does, unless it's like a bunch of houses yeah, by proxy thing. You, her. you probably have a situation where you don't like to lose your kids, but, um, well, if it keeps happening at some point, like you're like, who's the common denominator? <laughs> it's you know? process. Like I can't have kids. I don't need kids in my life. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't be a teacher because every single time they all die, <laughs> it's happened so many fucking times. <laughs> this is why I don't, uh, this is why I don't have pet turtles anymore. <laughs> Yeah, they keep dying. I stopped keep... keeping plants because of that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, just it's just depressing when uh, you go over to the pot and it's just fucking a dead plant. Yeah, it's just a bunch of dead hellions. <laughs> um, the uh, so, so they start they start fighting the the sentinel here, uh, and this is where like no no the sentinel's good like the whiz kids like we play basketball which I would like to see them mm-hmm. uh, play basketball and this is where X twenty three makes her decision like she jumps on the sentinel she's like you know, Justin, I'm not going to hurt you. Make your sentinel stab down, stand down, or I'm going to stab you. Uh, you know, and basically takes control of the situation. Like there are a lot of justifications for doing something that's wrong, but that doesn't make it not wrong. Yes. You know, you, you, we cannot keep these uh, kids here. Um, you know, and who shows up at the very end, but, uh, Sebastian Shaw. Yes. You know, so uh, the, the next issue probably going to be a big fight between Sebastian Shaw and like a thousand kids. And how will they mention the Phoenix during it? That's my question. Like, how are they, how are they <laughs> going to do it? <laughs> let's cut over to, to Kavita Rao browsing phoenix.org. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I see that Bruce Banner has updated the website with his latest findings. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad we have this community <laughs> wiki for the X-Men team. Um, I mean, the, the way it could tie in is if uh, the kids win and they get loose. So they're free for some of the, the clashes that yeah. are coming. Mm-hmm you know uh even though we know that at least the initial clash is going to happen on the moon but there are a lot of uh issues so maybe they'll get back to the x-mansion or avengers mansion or something i'm I'm sure we will come back to visit these kids before the arc is over with um i like th- i actually like this i know we talked about it being a little slower um but the the back and forth between sebastian saw as dumb as it was like you know the raid the comic book where he's going through laboratory one two like he's gone to the sewer level yeah. and then the basement <laughs> level and then he gets to the laboratory um as dumb as that was it was still fun that, that like you said they actually came out and like thought about it and again like this this whole conversation this whole process for x23 to like have to I, I like it when we have these big fights when it's real conceptual avengers versus x-men and people have to actually in the world think through what it means to you know ally Mm -hmm. themselves with those principles and the x you know x23 being a pov of that i think is really really good yeah makes tons of sense christos gage is a really reliable writer like he does he's never done anything that's blown me away but i'm never unhappy to read a christos gage comic it's fair like they're they're all pretty good you know um so yeah, good, good, good little comic. Uh, yeah. It's not going to make me like dive back into Avengers Academy and like finish it out, but I am excited to see what happens next. Same. Um, yeah. Thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate you. We do. Uh, what can they do, Jeremy? Uh, they can do Jeremy Patreon dot com slash DuckFeeTV and do money into into website. Into do Jeremy. <laughs> and, and, on to yeah, do money into to website Jeremy. into Jeremy Pocket and Jeremy Jeremy spend on beer. Yeah. And anxiety medicine. Yeah, that's the, the, order, that's the order of operations. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. I'm I'm looking at um, a gigantic thing of caramel popcorn I bought. Oh shit! Because uh, I've been feeling caramel popcorn lately. I don't know why. Uh, Stonehenge deliciously old fashioned caramel popcorn. So I watched a dude um, on the internet the other day uh, melt butter and chocolate uh, into a pan, pour popcorn seeds into it, salt everything. That's and then just fucking make chocolate yeah. salty popcorn, and I'm like, is it that fucking easy? I thought I had it's to go fake. to Nestle. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that that shit's fake, man. There's a there's a YouTuber that Cole turned me on to that just exposes bad like viral videos, God about damn it. recipes, and tries them all. Yeah, they're all fake. So if it looks really easy, it's not. I bought fucking popcorn uh, seeds today, Gary. You're fucking ruining me. This, my weekend is ruining. Like you can <laughs> ruined. You have all the stuff to just do it. You just can't do it quick. Like make popcorn and then make chocolate and then melt it over. But you have to do chocolate in a double boiler. You're just going to get burnt chocolate all over your popcorn. God damn it, Gary. So, I wanted it easy and quick and fast and good. And this me this I is have also pretty easy. <laughs> it will not be. This will be easy and slightly slightly less easy and slightly less fast 
I mean, the <laughs> ultimate fast and easy is just buying chocolate covered popcorn. Yeah, but I don't want to support like, Nestle's slavery operation, man. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so somebody's virtue signaling. Um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I, it's a, uh, but, uh, you know, this is just being the, the, conversation with i was gonna say the episode but we talked a lot before we started recording the uh, conversation where i recommend youtubers uh, and <laughs> yeah. Reardon is very fun to watch so um anyway Anywho. we'll be back in a couple of days with avengers number 26 bye everybody